G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Now this video is a little bit different to what I normally do. As you can see we've got the traffic going by behind. Twice a week I come local to here for work and I keep seeing we're about to go and take a walk up and have a look at. And I didn't know what it was. It's actually this. Oh, World War II tunnel. Well, there's a sign on it saying sorry we're closed so maybe that's because of the lockdowns and all that stuff it's a shame that would have been nice I'll go online one day and see if they ever open up again and if they do I'll take one of the guided tours and take you with me but let's follow the path up to the top I think this is the old guns were up here the World War II tunnels on the pathway there yeah, the old guns for the World War II, in case anybody came into the Fremantle Harbour area. Uh, yeah, this, this noise behind of the traffic is slowly disappearing as you walk up. It's nicely kept, nice, nicely kept gardens, or landscaping, whatever you want to call it. Be interesting to see what's up there. The well, I actually worked twice a week. I can just see the roof of it over there. It's an old building. I can see right in the distance on top of the hill. It's a beautiful old building. Australia, bit of cloud, we're in the winter here, we're in mid-July and it's normally our, I call it the wet season when we get the most rain. Uh, everybody thinks that Australia is just desert, uh, uh, all this greenery and if you've watched any of my other videos you can see how green the forest actually is. Uh, yeah, a lot around the coastal. We've got a lot of green areas where most people live. Not many people live inland. Uh, this one looks like it's going to go up. I've just noticed there's another. tower. Up there. So one day I might just see if there's a way up there and go and have a look, see what it is. We're walking past residential here, with houses there, and you can hear the dog. The house is just another 10 metres that way. It's probably a good half hour, easy drive out of Perth. get here if you're interested. Uh, that's a nice big house. Yeah the pool going. Yep the arrows are pointing this way for the tunnels. Let's keep walking this way. I'll show you the view when you get near the top. There we are looking over the Indian Ocean. Got some rain coming in, see it falling in the distance. And you see the ships that bring all the containers in. And they're queuing up, getting ready to load up and head out.
the old vehicle loading ramp. If you wanted to freeze and read that, uh, it says pictured are remnants of the timber supports for a vehicle loading ramp built by Defence circa 1947. The remnants were uncovered when foliage was removed during recent earthworks associated with the anti-aircraft display enclosures. A replica bund was constructed by the Society in December 2014. And this is what they replaced it with. And right next to it we've got this, Let's to the camera. And this would be thinking about memories if my dad was here at the moment. There was a gunner in the army, in the British Army. Uh, he's 91 years old now, suffering from dementia. Uh, we've been told he hasn't got long to live. So every opportunity I get, I'll go down and see dad. 40 millimeter Bofors light anti-aircraft gun. The 40mm Bofors light anti-aircraft gun was designed and originally manufactured in Sweden prior to World War II. It was sold to the latter manufactured under license by the major countries in the world. The gun was still in production uh, in various configurations in 2015. The gun fired a shell weighing 2 pounds 0.9 kilograms to a maximum height of 5,000 meters, which is 16,400 feet. The shell would explode on contact with an attacking aircraft or self-destruct. Eight personnel ran, uh, manned the gun in action. Look at that. Okay, and then just up here, the steps, there's another one. This one looks a different one, much bigger. Wow, imagine a noise as that fired. Let's go and read the plaque. It's 3.7 inch heavy anti aircraft gun. A 3.7 inch, which is 94 mm heavy anti-aircraft gun, was designed in Britain shortly before the outbreak of World War II, replacing the 3 inch gun that had been in service since World War I. It was mass produced in Britain, Canada and Australia, and used in all theatres of conflict during World War II and in post-war training in Australia until 1965. The gun fired a shell weighing 28 pounds, which is 12.7 kilograms, to a maximum height of 32,000 feet, which is 9,755 meters. A fuse was set to enable the shell to explode at a predicted height against an attacking aircraft. 11 personnel manned the gun in action. Look at that. Air Defence of Fremantle Port 1942. Early warning of an impeding air raid was provided from a number of strategically located Royal Australian Air Force radar sites. Batteries of 3.7 inch heavy anti aircraft guns, tactically sighted to provide an umbrella of protection, were alerted to the potential danger. In addition, further protection was provided by 40mm Bofors light anti-aircraft guns against low-flying strafing or strafing aircraft. Uh, Anti-searchlights were deployed in support of the heavy anti-aircraft guns, illuminating the targets for engagement. Number 32 radar station, Rottnest Island. 29 anti-heavy aircraft battery, Buckland Hill. 8 light anti aircraft battery Crawley and 90 centimeter World War II searchlight. <laughs> Probably got some handhelds that give off just as much light now.
There's another gun down there with a young lady on it. She's sitting there looking out. She's got a good view. Yes. And over there you can see the Fremantle docks. Here's the entrance to the tunnels. So we've got latent battery tunnels, over 300 metres of tunnels and chambers lie beneath this hill. They were constructed in 1942 and 1943 for ammunition storage and shelter for the crew, uh, crews manning the 6 inch coast guns. The gunners were assisted in this work by the Army Engineers from 7 Army Troops Company. The tunnels were abandoned in 1945 when the 6 inch guns were transferred to Princess Royal Fortress at Albany. They were uh, restored by the Royal Australian Artillery Historical Society who conduct guided tours each Sunday from 10am to 3pm. That would be cool going down there. One day. Six inch Mark 11 gun shield. This shield was mounted on HMAS Adelaide, one of the vessels that escorted convoys in and out of Fremantle during World War II. During a refit in 1943, this shield was replaced and in 2013 was loca located on a tip at Mornington Peninsula. Mornington Peninsula Shire gifted the shield to the Society in 2014 and the Royal Australian Navy Flinders Base enlisted the Surfaces R3 Recovery Company Army Reserve to transport it to Bay System Australia Williamstown Headquarters. Bay Systems uh, completely refurbished the shield and arranged transport to Leighton Battery uh, Bay Henderson. Branch designed and fabricated the mountings. The shield was fitted to the barrel on 23rd of September 2015 to resemble the original wartime equipment at Leighton Battery. And this is that shield and gun. Look at that. That's magnificent. Imagine that pointing at you. good I enjoyed that at least I know what's up here now let's hope one day they reopen the tunnels because that'd be fantastic to go for the walk around them and like I said if they do open them up I'll take you guys along with me uh, like I said, there's another monument up there in the lookout tower so I'll see if I can get to that for another video and we'll have a look around if they let us but yeah, I'll be back and I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, please go down below and click on the subscribe button, the notification bell and select all and the thumbs up button, the like button. And if you are already a subscriber, again, I thank you very much. And if you've enjoyed this, thumbs up. And okay, until next time, get out there, have some fun and take care. The sun's trying to break through a little gap in the clouds.